here at this uh, RV park here. Um, amazingly, the, the, the clouds went away and the sun came out and the water's beautiful. I'm like, whoa, wow, what a, what a difference the sun can make, right? It's really nice today. Look at this, they got a little gazebo here. I mean, this place looks a lot different when it's cloudy or rainy compared to when it's sunny and beautiful. Oh my gosh, Wisconsin is beautiful. I'm actually gonna take a break from editing now and uh, we're gonna go around and try to track down some of the murals and art here in the city because Ashland, Wisconsin is uh, very well known for a lot of murals. So a great opportunity to hop on the scooter and uh, go scoot around. Actually, uh, what I'm gonna do is leave the scooter parked here near uh, Walgreens, Main Street, and Ellis, and uh, just kind of walk around downtown here and kind of try to find some of these murals. So there's the first one right there. A lot of work and detail. A lot of cars parked here at this one, but I'm just putting the camera over my head so you can see. Cool. Ooh, sunny and 75 degrees. I don't think you could ask for much better. There's another one across the street. Geez, I almost missed this one. It's in the uh, back alley here. The old World War II plane scene. Huh, very cool. Okay, this is the Ashland Ore Duct, built in 1916 by the Foley Brothers. I feel like I gotta stand in front of one so you can see how massive they really are. The murals are like a complete city-long block in some cases. Look at this one. They're all uh, timbermen. Unreal, wow. Oh my goodness, what a quirky little town here in Ashland, Wisconsin. These mural paintings are just amazing. What an effort. What a great piece of character that adds to a city. And these old storefronts, these are not fake to make them look old. Many of these have been restored. There's the Bay Movie Theater playing Kidnap, Atomic Blonde, and Wind River. Okay, here's another long mural. Well, you can see a bunch just within walking distance here downtown. Old uh, 30s and 40s scenes here. Huh. Old lighthouses. Yeah, that makes sense for this area. Well, I guess that's it. Here's a nice uh, blank canvas, in case anybody is interested. <laughs> All right, I got out on a sunny day, made the most of it. Now I gotta get back and get to work. I'll cut back in when I leave here tomorrow and head towards Michigan. Well, good morning, Mr. Kitty Cat, how are you? I'm doing well, in case you guys care, in case you care, Jax. Uh, just about all packed up, ready to get on the road, already put the scooter on the stuff. So we're getting into Michigan right now. So I'm getting into the city of Ironwood, Wisconsin here, which is the last city before I cross over into Michigan. I, I'm gonna look for gas because I, I was looking last night, it looks like gas is uh, a little more, this is not a gas station. Wait, I guess it is a gas station. 269 a gallon. No, I don't think so. Whoa. Corkscrew. Well, I don't know. I'm not going to pay 269 a gallon for gas. It's got to be cheaper in Michigan, right? The corkscrew. Let's point out the obvious. It's called the corkscrew, and they have a big corkscrew. So there you go. All right. Here we go. Let's get into Michigan. Oh my goodness. Wait, I got one more thing to show you inside, real quick. I did get a Wisconsin magnet here, and I think it. I think it sums up a lot. There's football, boats, and beer, and cherries, and flowers. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that represents the state well. Here it is, off to our right. There's a blue sign, welcome to pure Michigan. We did it. We finally did it, Jax. We made it to Michigan. And now that I'm here, I'm almost just like, ah, what a journey, Michigan. How long have I been trying to get to Michigan, guys? Yes. Well, we're here. <laughs> now what? <laughs> Be 
beautiful. I realize this is all Michigan here, but I want to wait till I get down here to put that part of the state sticker on. So for now, there's the upper. Fantastic. Really friendly staff here at the Welcome Center. Um, what do we get here? Got uh, my Michigan roadmap and a complete guide to Michigan's Upper Peninsula. All sorts of really, really helpful stuff in here. I gotta sit down and browse over that tonight. One thing I was a little concerned about, <laughs> I didn't mention it right away, but as soon as you hit the Michigan state line there, there was a big sign that says, statewide, no overnight street parking from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. And I asked her about it, I'm like, ah, did I make a big mistake by coming to Michigan? And she said, no, it's only in the winter time. It's for the snow plows. You can't park on the side streets because the plows are just gonna bury you in snow. So, okay, here we go. Well, let me put on my thinking cap and see what I can come up with here. This taco truck's running a huge generator. So let me go inside and talk to you about this. I still don't have any service up here in the upper peninsula here. I took a screenshot of this over here. I guess the uh, uh, Stormy Cromer was a locomotive engineer and the Cromer hat is, I guess, famous in this area up here where it got really cold. Uh, they sold a lot of them up here, so that's pretty cool. I don't feel like I need a Cromer hat. I don't think I could sport it very well. It's kind of an ugly hat, sorry guys. But anyway, so I'm here in uh, Big Powderhorn Ski Resort. Apparently the ski capital of the Midwest, as evidenced by this ginormous ski bum here off the highway. <laughs> I actually uh, do like to snow ski. I have never gone snowboarding, but I have been on two skis, both on snow and in the water, since I was eight or nine years old. Just haven't done it on the road because I chase 70 degrees. I'm never in an area where I can rent gear and go up to a mountain, but I would like to here so I don't forget how to ski. Otherwise, there'd be no reason for me to be in an area like this in the snowy season. So, I need to go find a campground. Ladies and gentlemen, this is very interesting. I'm only 10 miles into Michigan right now, and I did a U-turn because there's a sign that said free overnight camping. Now, you have got to be kidding me. This is free. It appears that I'm going to get the whole spot right here. Uh, I see water. They have electric, picnic table, and I'm going to drive my RV right up on my own little perch here. Oh my goodness. Holy cow. Whoa. Bear with me guys, this this still has not settled and kicked in yet. I mean, are you kidding me? I have waited so many years to come to Michigan, especially the upper Michigan Peninsula. I have waited so long and now I'm here. You, I mean, free camping? My own little lake? It's a first come first serve basis, no reservations and in the one of the hosts or the office, you can, they do accept donations. I don't even know how long I'm going to stay here right now. 30 amp and water? I, I'm just, I'm a little in shock right now. I feel like I need to just let this settle. So, wow. Let me cut back in in my next video and I'll have a better plan. I got a lot of reading to do, a lot of planning to do. But so far... I waited way too long to come here. Oh my goodness. This is paradise. 69 degrees today. Unbelievable. Guys, see you in a couple days. Bye-bye. Hey guys, this is Jax, my kitty cat. I'm his servant, Eric. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel here on RVing. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up below. Make sure you subscribe, check out all our other videos, and keep following us on the road. Thanks guys.